I have to start dancing if we keep that up. Thank you, Mark. You don't want to see me dance, trust me. It's kind of like if you've ever seen the movie uh, Young Frankenstein. <laughs> and Ed Asner's up there as Frankenstein, the monster, singing, uh, putting on the Ritz. That's how I am. Uh, if you don't know that movie, watch. It's, it's a funny movie. <laughs> Probably not one I should use in a scriptural reference, but, but it's a funny movie. Good morning. <clears throat> we do. We have some rails up, Bob. Yeah, these will be come in handy. We just had these installed this last Monday. Uh, so if any of you need to come up on stage for some reason, you can hold on to these. Um, I'll probably be using these too from time to time. You know, it'll be good. A um, couple of things. First of all, I'd like to point out the candles on either side. These were up last week. We had somebody in the body build these uh, in this really ingenious engineering mind and came up with how to keep them in place. Uh, and I was asked to make it anonymous, so I'm not going to tell you who or anything. Uh, but somebody in our body has had this idea for many, many years and began working on it. Uh, has a lot of really cool ideas of how the candles can be used to symbolize different things as we lead into to Easter, uh, as we have Advent again next year and everything. And so we're going to have them up for a while. Uh, there might be a time just because if you have something up all the time, when you start changing things for symbolism, it loses some of the purpose. And so we'll have them up for a while and then probably take them down and then intentionally put them up on a very regular basis for different, different events leading into special, special moments in our faith and everything. So I want to say thank you to the anonymous individual who put them up there, and I would like to ask you guys just to clap because that person knows who they are, and they're absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I really appreciate that. It's fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> Can I have the lights turned on for a second, please? I know this is a little unusual. We'll go back to the nice dark in a second. Uh, but I wanted to just take a moment and look at everybody's faces and just tell you that I love you. God loves you. He sees you. Every bit of what you're going through, every bit of who you are, He made you. He designed you. He knows exactly what season of life that you are in physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and you are deeply loved, whether you're older, whether you're younger, it is never too late to know Him, to desire Him, and to fall in love with our God who loves you more than you can possibly fathom. There are many of you here that I don't know very well yet, and that's just going to take some time. It always does. There will be some that I will eventually know a lot better than others. That's just the natural way of life. But I want all of you to know, this is not my sermon, it's just something I was impressed upon when I was down here worshiping. I want all of you to know that I pray for you and that I love you. Okay, we can get back to the regularly scheduled sermon. We can turn the lights back off. This just looks better on the live stream with the lights off like this. You know, last week, last week, Becca announced that, that she's transitioning back home to Colorado. In any given season of life, whether it's our individual season of life, whether it is the church family's life, whether it's you and your career, wherever you are, there is always change going on. In fact, I would be willing to say the one constant that we often have in life is change. And it's, it's not, sometimes it's not this big change where there's this massive transition and somebody that we deeply care about is leaving. Sometimes they're just small changes. Things like my son, who's only 11 years old and already has feet the same size as mine. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't like that change. I don't like that he might actually be bigger than me someday. That's going to be very awkward because I've been bigger than everybody else most of my life. Right? 
But that's a change that I'm going to have to cope with, and it's a change that takes time. I've watched him go from being literally being born to he's about to have his 12th birthday next month. And, and I know he's going to continue changing and growing. And it's like that for all of my kids. It's like that for all of our relationships. In this world, we will have change. And there is no point holding on to the past or fearing tomorrow. There will be change. Change in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be difficult. But the difficult things end up producing some of the best things in the long run. You do not plant a field without having to dig down into the dirt, without having to disturb what was already there. And yet we have an unchanging God. His creation changes day in and day out. It groans for the day of a new creation. But our God is unchanging. The Alpha and the Omega, the great I Am, is just as present in His creation as He was from the very beginning. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, speaks of the Word. The Word is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And all things, all things were created through Him. And apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. I want to point out a pattern for you to consider in the whole process of creation as we've been, as we've been discussing. God speaks, and He speaks because God wills something. And so the, the, the words that He says reveals to us the will of God. His voice reveals His will by the power of the Holy Word. His Word directs and instructs all of creation. He says, let there be light, and there was light. It's a math formula. God's will plus God's Word equals revelation. The light of God revealing His presence, His movement, His invitation for us to see and to seek Him. Let there be an expanse between the waters. And it was so. God's will plus God's Word equals definition. Order from chaos. He establishes His creation in their place. He produces expanses that further define us in Him. And in all cases, He calls it good. God's will plus God's Word equals God's goodness. Whatever season you may be in, whether it's one we've already discussed or one we'll discuss in the coming weeks, whatever season it is, Search for God's will, first and foremost. Align your will with God's will. Submit your will to God's will. Because submission, our submission to God's will, plus our relationship with God's word, that is Jesus Christ, equals recognition of God's goodness. Now maybe this formula is a little bit oversimplified. It doesn't necessarily take into account our constant struggles, our sins, our pain, our doubts, our insecurities, our anxieties, or our sicknesses and diseases. And these are very, very real pressures and concerns that plague our hearts, they plague our minds, they plague our spirits, they plague our bodies. 
They bring us down. But they are also distractions used by Satan to keep our eyes shut out to the light, to keep our hearts and minds in darkness. I'll give you an example. Last night was a very difficult night of sleep for my bride and I. We both had very strange, disturbing dreams. We ended up with one of our children, our youngest, it's not August, he's not getting in our bed at 12 years old nearly. Our youngest ended up in our bed because he was having a rough night, which means that we were up all night long. The dog was barking at 3 o'clock in the morning. There was no sleep, no rest, and frankly, I am very, very tired at the moment. Right? We have all been there, right? This is not unusual. This is the life of being a parent. This is part of it. On top of that, I went to urgent care yesterday because for the past six weeks, I have barely been able to put my weight onto my right knee. I did not bang it against anything. I have no clue why it's hurting. Usually if there were some, there's no bruise, and I would think, okay, well, it's just going to get better. It has not been getting better. So I go to urgent care. They take an x-ray. They say, your knee looks fine. So they maybe think that it's maybe tendonitis, but actually believe I probably have the early onset of arthritis which is super exciting about getting older. I love this part of life. So, so coincidentally, we have these handrails installed last week, and when I say I might be using them, I ain't lying. <laughs> right? These look very, very nice to me at the moment. Okay? On top of it, this morning, I'm in my office, and I'm, I'm praying through my sermon. I'm looking through my sermon as I do every Sunday morning, kind of getting it fresh in my mind and... And asking God, God, is this really the direction you want me to go with it? And, and he put something on my heart to add to it that we'll get to later on. And, and I, I'm typing it up and I'm adding in there. And then out of nowhere, my nose starts to bleed. Right? This is a bizarre Sunday. These are distractions from the enemy that wants to disturb and destroy what it is the Lord wants to say to somebody in here today. Maybe it's you, maybe it's not. If it's not, then I ask that the whole time you begin praying and asking that the person who's supposed to receive the words today has their heart opened up and their ears opened up so they can hear it and they can receive it. So the seeds of life can be planted. Because the enemy will not win. Satan does not win. We have an adversary who believes that our destruction and the complete desolation of God's good creation would prove that evil is dominant forevermore. Satan is wrong. We have an adversary who would drown us in darkness, define us by our sins rather than by the grace of God, and deliver us to the gates of hell spiritually barren of life. Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. Then God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Will plus word. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering of the water he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Will plus word equals God's goodness. Then God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth, bearing fruit with seeds in it according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Evening came, and then morning, the third day. God's will shifted the waters so the land could appear and be dried. He spoke, and it was so. He looked at the earth, finally ready 
to produce the life that he had in mind, that he desired to will into existence. He spoke, and it was so. This is the day of life. If this is your current season spiritually, then the Lord has called you out of darkness already. He has begun to define you and to establish you. Now He is further establishing you, further revealing His heart for you. As the darkness covered the watery depths, God created light and revealed the watery depths. He took chaos revealed by the light and moved it into order. On day three, the established watery depths in the firmament covered the land. And without the presence of both water and fertile soil, the life that God willed to grow out of the land would not have been able to be sustained on earth. So he moves the water to one place. He further defines it. He raises up the land. He dries it. And he prepares it for life. Likewise, he is preparing you for good fruits to be produced. He has or is or will uncover the tender soil of your heart. And in that place of that tender soil of your heart, he is planting good seeds. He is planting instructions and wisdom and love and relationship and joy and peace and faithfulness and gentleness and goodness and mercy and hope and faith and self-control. And He is building these things up in you. But when the seeds are planted, it looks very different than when the seeds come to full fruition. The tree does not look like the tiny seed. It has to undergo undergo growth and change. I want to encourage you to adhere to the Lord's instructions. They are seeds for good fruits in your heart and life. And He will plant them in the tender soil and they will produce life. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 23, I don't have a slide for this one, says, My son, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to my sayings. Don't lose sight of them. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's body. Guard your heart above all else, for it is the source of life. If you have lost sight of the Lord's sayings or have never adhered to them, it is not too late. Seek the Lord's will. Submit to Christ and ask God to restore your heart, to bring your spirit and mind into alignment with them. This is the fancy word that we use in in faith, in Christianity, justification, to be justified before the Lord. He does it in us. Let Him work in your life. Let Him work in your life. Several months ago, I delivered a message about praying through Scripture. I want to give you an example of this again. Psalm 51.10 God Create a clean heart for me and renew a steadfast spirit within me. In other words, God, prepare our hearts for life, for good fruits, and strengthen our spirits by your spirit. (coughs) Excuse me. Verse 11. Do not banish me from your presence and take your Holy Spirit from me. God, I once was in darkness. I was once drowning. I once was lost, but now I'm found. There are parts of my heart that are not fertile. Parts that are hard and cracked. 
parts that are overcome by unforgiveness, moments of abuse, times of suffering. God, don't leave my heart in such a state. Keep me in your presence. God, if my heart must be covered in anything, may it be your Holy Spirit. Verse 12. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. God, plant joy in my heart. Remind me I was lost, but let me focus on being found. May your spirit be my sustenance. May you sustain me. May my spirit be intently devoted to you. Remove the rebellious weeds from my heart. Verse 13, Then I will teach the rebellious your ways, and sinners will return to you. God, let the seeds that you plant in my heart produce good fruit in my life and in my spirit. Take the fruit that you plant in my life and use it, Father, to plant good seeds in others. <clears throat> Create in them the same heart you create in me. <coughs> plant joy in their hearts. And may they find it in your salvation. We're way, way ahead of this, this scripture. We'll get there in a second. The day of life, the day of life is a day for heart preparation. It's a day of spiritual planting, expecting duplication, expecting recreation for our sustenance to sustain us in the pursuit of God's holiness. It is a day for roots to go deeper in the Lord so that growth can happen. Let God plant seed-bearing fruits in your heart so that His Spirit can produce His fruits in your life. And that is, as I mentioned just a little bit ago, the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5, you can read them, 22, verse 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and my personal favorite, and the hardest one to come by, self-control. The fruits of the Spirit grow in a clean heart before God the Father, in a spirit submitted to His Spirit, in a life obedient to to the word of Jesus Christ. Submission to God, relationship with Christ, you'll see the goodness. Ask Him to create in you a clean heart. He will change you. He is doing a good work in you. God promised Israel that He would restore them as they removed the abhorrent and detestable practices among them. We might look at that nation and say, well, we don't have idols we don't have this we're not doing this but you we have sin and that is also abhorrent and detestable before god so consider that as i read this verse you can put it up on the screen now we've got ezekiel verse 11 or chapter 11 verse 19 through 20 i will give them integrity of heart the word integrity is one that implies to be stitched together unbreakable integrity of heart and put a new spirit within them I will remove their heart of stone. <coughs> Excuse me. I will remove their heart of stone from their bodies and give them, <coughs> goodness, a heart of flesh so that they will follow my statutes, keep my ordinances, and practice them. Those statutes, ordinances, and practices, those are good seeds. Those are instructions to be planted into the fertile soil of our heart. God's will is our salvation to remove our heart of stone and replace it with one prepared to produce good fruit in unity with Christ. And this is a cause for His glory. To worship and praise Him with joy and love. 
in a little bit, I'm going to read through the entirety of Psalm 27. Before I do, as we read it, and this might help you, I'm a big fan of shutting eyes and, and picturing things of God, allowing our minds to go there. In Genesis, it talks about before the flood that even their imaginations were evil. Well, you know what? If imaginations can be evil, what else can they be? Good! If God created us and he created us with imagination and he says that his creation is good, then what is the imagination supposed to be? Good. It is a good, healthy practice to allow our imaginations to help draw us into the presence of God and then to test whatever we're seeing or thinking according to Scripture, according to the character of God. I'm a big fan of taking your imagination and submitting it to the will of God. And so as I read through this, if it helps you out, I want to encourage you, again, to close your eyes And to consider certain things, certain things about your life. Consider what it is that he is saying to you. Consider his light, that he saves us from chaos and creates in us life and hope. Consider the formula to see God's goodness in your life. Submission to God's will plus relationship with God's word, that is Jesus Christ, equals God's goodness. Will plus word equals good creation. What does that mean for you? Consider what it means to seek the Lord, to desire Him, to live expectant of His good fruits. Consider what it means for the seeds that He plants to be concealed, to be hidden in the land, in your heart, until the ripe time comes for them to grow and to bear good fruit. Consider what needs to be shifted in your life, to see your heart fully prepared for the Lord's work. Consider also how the adversary has used time and other people, your own flesh, to harden your heart. Can you, will you, submit those things to God and ask Him to create a new heart in you? Can you imagine yourself lifting your heart up to God saying God take this heart of stone and renew in me a right spirit and give me a tender heart of flesh consider what rebellious weeds Satan has or is or may be intending to plant in your life to choke and destroy the Lord's good fruit can you will you Let the word of God, that is Jesus Christ, call them out. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Though an army deploys against me, my heart will not be afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, I will still be confident. Confident. Con. With. Fident. Fidelity. With. With. Fidelity. Standing with truth. Firmly in truth. I will still be confident. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire. To dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking Him in His temple. For He will conceal in me in his shelter, in the the land of my heart, in the day of adversity. He will hide me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. And then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifices in his tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Lord, hear my voice when I call. Be gracious to me and answer me. My heart says this about you. Seek the Lord. Seek His face. Lord, I will seek Your face. Do not hide Your face from me. 
Do not turn your servant away in anger. Even you have been my helper. Do not leave me or abandon me, God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandons me, the Lord cares for me. Because of my adversaries, show me your way, Lord, and lead me on a level path. Do not give me over to the will of my foes or false witnesses, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing violence. I am certain that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart be courageous. Wait for the Lord. Submit to the will of God. Seek His face. May His face shine down upon you. Intentionally dwell in His house all the days of your life. Remain in relationship with Christ Jesus. And don't harden your heart with fear or accusation or dread. Let the Holy Spirit cover you. Let the Holy Spirit conceal you in the day of adversity, preparing you for good fruits. And wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and courageous, for God has not left you to perish, but has conquered death and is filling your heart with life. Discover what it means to see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Discover what it means to rest in the joy of His salvation. Earlier, we prayed through Psalm 51. This is a song, and I'd like to sing it. I'd like us to sing it. We're going to put the words up on the screen. I don't know if you know it or not. Um, when I was looking at it earlier this morning, I noticed that it was written by a, an artist named Keith Green. How many of you know that name, Keith Green? Right? A few hands go up. It's really interesting whenever I see songs by Keith Green because the worship pastor in Kansas City uh, at the church I was, I was serving uh, was Keith Green's son-in-law. So I know... I know Keith Green's daughter and uh, his, his wife before he passed away and everything. And, uh, and so it always intrigues me when I see songs that were written by Keith Green. I just think that's a fun connection. So I would like to sing this song. It is, it is Psalm 51. I'm just going to have to bear with my voice today. I'm a little coffee too, so I may be a little pitchy. I don't know. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And renew a right spirit within me. I want to sing it one more time. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from Thy presence, O Lord, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore unto me the joy of Thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. God, my Heavenly Father, God, I ask for each individual here and for this whole body that You take out, Father, the hearts of stone. That You restore in this place hearts of flesh, Father, that is ripe and primed and ready for Your seeds to be planted. That You give us patience to wait on You, God, to see Your goodness in the land of the living. God, I thank You for the day of life, that in the day of life You take what was once hardened and dead and resurrect in us your good creation by your love, by your power, by your grace. Create in us a new heart, a clean heart, a pure heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we go ahead and have the lights turn up, please? It's a little bright. You said, oh. <laughs> Bob's eyes are dilating now. He sees spots. He sees he probably sees purple spots all over my face. That's okay. I see spots over you guys too, trust me. Those lights